hopefully some of you will be aware that uh, some architects and some engineers have also declared climate emergencies um, this year, um, I believe largely led by Bureau Happold. Um, but you know, many others are sort of getting on board with that. So that's quite a neat introduction to what we do. We are focused very much on built environment professions. Um, and I think that, you know, particularly with the school strikes is quite interesting because from my perspective, um, what can children do to deal with climate emergency? There must be some children growing up now that hear adults talk about this and know that they can do little bits about plastic and they can do little bits about reducing their energy and changing their diets and things like that. Well, what careers can they go into? Careers advice and guidance in schools. Uh, and I've been in, been in and around education now for about 10 years and careers advice and guidance in schools is not good. Uh, I'm sure there's some people in the room that you know, probably agree with that. Um, and I, I, I won't sort of labour and point too much. Um, but what we do, um, I suppose, is, is focused on kids. It's, focused on exposing them to careers in the built environment um, and I suppose it, it came from um, my, uh, the, well the, the founder Alison um, was in a field working on the Building Schools for the Future project which um, some of you might know it was a sort of 40-45 billion pound project from the, the previous government um, and she was in a field as a land surveyor um, thinking to herself well I keep hearing about skills shortages why aren't there any children in, in this field with me now, learning about this? Um, and Alison then went away um, and she did her, uh, I, I think she did a PGCE or, or similar, and she wrote a curriculum, which is the, the DEC learning programme. So yes, I work for a Class of Your Own, uh, which was introduced, that's kind of quite hidden a little bit in this, in this talk. Um, have I got something I can tap as well, well, by the way? Is it that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Class of Your Own has been around, it's, um, so 2009 was really the launch um, for Alison. Um, so, you know, we've been around for 10 years um, and we're happy to say that this year we are launching um, uh, debt programs in the USA. Um, so we were contacted by the uh, American Civil Engineering Society uh, who wanted to, to pick it up and, and start a class out in, I believe, Indiana. Um, we've also got our first class started in Dubai this month. Um, we are talking very much to Lithuania, um, actually John, um, who I'm going to talk about in a moment, but John's former teacher has moved out to Malaysia and has taken deck with him out there. So, you know, we, we are a small social enterprise that hopefully is having um, a, a bit of an impact and, and changing how schools and how children are um, looking at this issue of <coughs> sustainability and engineering. Um, so they were my thoughts really from the previous two speakers. Um, my role... Um, is it is actually at this place, um, and I want to. I, I don't want to dwell too much on on Stratford and the, the Olympic Park, but I thought it was worth um, picking up on a few bits around here. Does anyone is anyone, is anyone familiar with this? Can anyone sort of pick out pick a building? Tell me a building around here. West Ham. Which one? It's where West Ham that is where West Ham play. <laughs> yes. Um, one of the things I love to do is ask kids these questions because that, that originally I think was a £450 million um, stadium and I think they spent about £250 million converting it when, um, when West Ham came in um, and, and kids love money, that's one thing that I've noticed um, doing this job. Um, any, any others? So that's the London Stadium from where West Ham yeah, copper box. Yeah, absolutely. Copper box is this one here. Uh, so this is a sort of uh, stadium. It has a lot of it's like basketball courts mainly. They do also this sort of an arena. They do concerts, things like that. Um, the velodrome up to the left. Yeah, absolutely. The velodrome I think is sort of hidden here. Um, actually, roller coaster. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. Yes, the Arsenal Hotel. That's a sort of slidey thing, and you've obviously got you've got the aquatic centre there, the swimming centre. <laughs> Um, part of the reason that I love sort of this, um, there, there's a new project called Eastwick and Sweetwater here. That phase one is this patch of um, well, it's concrete block here now. Um, there's uh, about 300 um, flats and houses being built on that site. Um, I quite like that at the moment because they have got remote control cranes. So there are five cranes on site. There's no one sat in the top of the cranes. They're being operated uh, by guys uh, with, well, I suppose, things like this. The, the, the benefit of that is they can actually walk around with the load and they can deliver it more safely and more securely to where it's supposed to go. So, you know, there, there are just little bits about Stratford that I love. And I, I love talking to kids about this stuff and, and introducing them to things. 
The last thing that I'm going to probably say, if you're lucky, um, on Stratford is the wetlands area. Now, obviously, um, Stratford's been around for a long time. Um, I think Clarnico's sweet factory started there, uh, sort of Hackney Wick area, um, 100 odd years ago. Um, but a lot of the waterways and the canals were in a really derelict state in a really, really bad way. And um, as part of the legacy of um, Stratford, um, they wanted to clean up those waterways um, and introduce wetlands. So there's a lot of biodiversity there. I forgot something. Kings Yard Energy Centre uh, is a district heating uh, power station. Um, I think it's biomass, but don't um, probe me too much on that one. So, you know, there's lots of bits about Stratford um, that are quite exciting. The developments there are going on um, until 2032. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and so my role, um, working with London Energy Development Corporation, um, is to engage schools in the four boroughs around um, Stratford sites. That's Newham, Hackney, Tower Hamlets and Waltham Forest. Um, and I'm currently working with eight schools, about 200 children, introducing them to built environment professions, um, with a very strong sort of sustainability and communities flavour to it. So hopefully that gives you some um, a bit of an overview. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about what DEC is, why I'm here. I've uh, got a couple more slides on Stratford, sorry if anyone gets a bit bored of that. Uh, give you a few examples um, and then I'm going to hand over to John um, because he's far more interesting than I am because John is someone that has actually been through uh, the DEC programme. Um, and hopefully he's going to tell us a bit about his journey and, and how it influenced him and changed his perspective um, on the world. So but I'll let him uh, do the good stuff about that. So DEC, Design Engineer Construct, um, is a learning program. We have qualifications, awards, projects, workshops uh, and competitions that are all focused around um, sust well, sustainability of built environment education. Um, they all loosely follow the REBA scheme of work, so it is tied into um, providing project-based learning that enables um, school kids um, up to the age of 18 to experience what it's like to work in real environments. Um, one of the things that we do through our Adopt a School program is we make employers go into the classroom and not go into the classroom to stand at the front and say, I do quantity surveying and aren't I great and the company I work for is wonderful, but actually to sit down next to the learners and work with them on their designs and to impart some of their knowledge and their experience into the minds of 14 year old uh, school kids. And that's the fun part, it's challenging, but it is, it's probably the most fun part. Um, so like I say, you know, th throughout what we try and do is, uh, is sustainability and communities focus. You know, one of the first things that school kids can do is an eco classroom workshop. Um, the brief there is they will design an ecologically friendly classroom um, that has a, uh, a dual use that enables that classroom to be used to work with the local community to, uh, to inform them about sustainability. Um, we, <laughs> we haven't yet um, got one of these built, but we got very, very close. Um, one of the first groups that went through um, up in Manchester, um, their designs for their classroom um, through the Building Schools of the Future programme did get chosen by the council to move forward, um, but sadly uh, George Osborne came into power and pulled the plug on that. Um, so that never quite got built. So we're still waiting for our first one to actually you know, get built, but we are seeing um, quite a bit of success with people going into um, apprenticeships and into work in the sector. I feel a bit, I, I, I use this slide actually in, in the classroom with kids because kids um, always, uh, the, the fir their first question is, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up eventually, and they will say, how much can you, how much does, can you earn? Uh, so I, I've now got to the point where the last few slides of a presentation similar to this one are actually, you know, here's the average salary of a quantity surveyor, here's the average salary of an architect and a building services engineer, and, you know, and sort of list them out for them because, uh, so on Monday a girl put her hand up and said, sir, so, who earns more, an architect or an engineer? Um, uh, yeah, at which point I normally, uh, I, I do sometimes sidetrack into Persimmon Homes CEO and the £75 million bonus he paid himself last year. Um, <laughs> But they, they do sometimes ask why am I here. So I started out as a chemical engineer. Um, I, my, I, you know, I grew up in the 80s and was aware that the ozone was, was failing and we were probably going to get hit by nuclear weapons at some point. Um, that kind of evolved and you know, climate change emerged. Um, I got interested in environmental things um, and uh, started working for a civil engineering company. Um, at which I discovered, hopefully you guys will know what I, why I put 40%. I asked the school kids why I put 40%. Is anyone... Anyone want to take a stab at why I've got 40%? Bill, 
the environment accounts for 40 percent of energy loss? Pretty much, yeah. Like yeah. Globally, buildings account for about 40% of carbon emissions and environmental impact. So, you know, the way that we design, build, and maintain our buildings is very important in terms of trying to deal with this with this issue. Um, as I moved through my career, I got very, very interested in places um, and creating places for people, and creating places for kids. And uh, you know, it's fascinating to see the school street school streets work coming at the moment, where they are basically. Um, pedestrianising streets around some schools around the country um, and seeing some success with increase in cycling and walking, etc, etc. You know, the fact that the built environment has been designed for cars for the last 20 to 30 years is rather frustrating um, and, you know, we can, we can really do a lot, I think, to change that um, and to provide a healthier environment for our kids. I have a five-year-old boy and he loves cycling, um, but we we can't sometimes take him to school because uh, we can't let him cycle to school because there are big roads in the way. Um, and that gets worse as you get into more urban environments. Um, education uh, it has also has an important role. So that was why I changed eventually from um, uh, energy and sustainability engineering into, um, into what I do now, which is education related. Um, because globally, the biggest impact in reducing fertility is girls' education, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you the issues with population. So, a little bit about um, Stratford. Actually, economics is quite important. You know, in terms of the, the, the London boroughs, um, creating jobs is, is a key driver of what we're doing and why my role is funded. Um, and there's a few stats and things on there. But, you know, the challenge is to ensure local residents are equipped with the skills necessary to compete in the labour market moving forward. Okay, that's what we're trying to do by getting into schools early, helping them to understand the changes that are going on, and hopefully encouraging kids to understand um, uh, and, and progress and making formed decisions about what career paths they want to pursue. Um, and we're doing that in partnership with, with the organisations you can see um, on the site there. Um, there's, uh, again, I, I, I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but there is quite a lot going on at Stratford, and these are the kind of projects that we can introduce school kids to and you know, get them involved in um, actually designing, you know, working with planners, working with consultants um, around a lot of these projects. Um, this one is fun because it's... Um, uh, the Cultural Quarter, so there is a new um, Sanders Wells Theatre, there's BBC Headquarters, um, University uh, College of Fashion going in there, Victorian Albert Museum and about 800 flats going in um, on, a, on a little patch of land uh, opposite the Aquatic Centre as well. So it's things like that, that you know, that, that project is, is um, it broke ground in July this year, They're, it's running until 2023, so there's an opportunity to actually get kids from the local area to go look at it, look around, understand it, learn from it, take it back into the classroom and work on their designs. <laughs> and they come up with things like this. Um, this is just literally a couple, um, but these are real work from, um, on the left, level two would be 14-year-olds, uh, 15-year-olds, Level three, 16 year olds, and seven, uh, 17 year olds working in real, uh, it's, it's Revit. Uh, some of you may have heard of it, it's 3D modeling software um, that they use. Revit uh, is BIM, uh, building information modeling, so you know, it's fully connected. Uh, I might on the next slide, so for example, you can do things in BIM like um, solar analysis of buildings. Uh, I mentioned Clarnico's before. This was um, a week long project that we put on with some school children, and, and one team came up with a Sweetie Center which I thought was lovely, based on um, the fact that it's Eastwick and Sweetwater, and it was, it was Clarnico's in the past. They've got a sort of sweetie shape to it as well. Uh, it's a health centre, so it's community-focused. Um, community you know, how, how can we engage with communities? Um, but like, like I said, this particular thing is looking at um, solar orientation and the impacts that hopefully I don't need to talk about solar orientation with you lot. Um, Hyperloop challenge, that, that, happened, that was our competition this year. So. This is uh, pupils from Drummond Community High School um, working with Bentley Infrastructure, a big American software company like um, similar to Autodesk. Um, those four lucky students are going to Singapore um, in October this year um, as because they won the prize for uh, designing the station uh, and the carriage, I believe, of the um, Hyperloop project. Um, this is this is a fun. This this is a great um, project that we we did with uh, Radisson and uh, London Underground which was that James Bond has retired and decided he wants to give back to the community, so he wants to <laughs> convert um, Old Street Station into a uh, sustainable and ecologically friendly hotel. 
Um, and so, we'll, so the students got a brief along those lines that was, you know, how, how sustainable can you make a hotel that is a refurbishment and a repurposing of a building. Uh, I think you probably get the idea. This I love as well. Is, um, so that's Jeff from Balfour BT, who is the design lead at the aforementioned um, East Wigan Sweetwater project, working with Rashid and Miles uh, from Newham, Co uh, Newham College and Heathcote School. So, you know, it, it's getting people from industry to sit down with pupils and talk to them about their designs and hopefully inspire them uh, to go on and, and do great things, hopefully. Um, if you want to support us in any way, shape or form, please do get in touch. You've got my details there, which I'll leave momentarily before um, I hand over to John. Um, there's, there's a variety of ways you can engage. To be honest, you know, there's lots of things on there. The key thing, that the key ask for people in the room, I want to hear from you in particular about destinations for our learners. If you can provide destinations into uh, apprenticeships, higher education, into employment, then you know, we want to hear from you. We want to be able to you know, help those uh, children and those children that are graduating uh, move on. With that in mind, um, I'd like to welcome John up, um, because John is one of our um, fantastic graduates, um, yeah. as you'll find out. Um, That's me. Um, right, I'm a trainee in Buildings Fair, work for Atkins Limited. Um, I've done the Design Engineer Construct course since year nine, so since I can really remember, to be honest. <laughs> Um, when I first started the course, the first thing they got us to do was design a uh, sustainable and eco-friendly house. I draw a box and that, I called it eco-friendly. I, I did have no understanding of sustainability whatsoever. I thought it was all wind turbines, a few solar panels, happy days. Um, since doing tech, this has transformed sort of my interpretation of sustainability um, through all the units we do. Um, it sort of exposes us to thinking about U values of your building, uh, different insulation types, um, how can you do, uh, um, how the sustainability of you know, transport materials, what warehouse you get from, you know, you have to consider all of these things in your projects. Um, and, yeah. right. So in the course, you have to produce a mission statement. So the mission statement is your idea of how you're going to perceive your development. So I chose to do a small, um, uh, housing development, it was 68 bungalows in my area, um, and we had to say at what Brian level we wanted to achieve, and we had to justify that in our project. Um, you can be right or wrong, because it's very flexible, whatever you perceive to be right, as long as you can justify that, and you showed it to a professional, um, then you perceive to have a good idea. Now we come up with things like this, this was some of my work, um, I used at this age of 14, I started using Revit, I started using AutoCAD, and I took this into a feasibility. So I took my project that I had, I showed the professionals, um, and I was lucky enough to get some work experience out of that. So I took it to a, a professional working environment, and I was able to sit with architects, building surveyors, and um, add different finesse to my work, really. You know, sitting in front of a desk all day and looking at pictures of sustainability and growing for your coursework is one thing, but being able to get on site and work with professionals who do this stuff day in and day out just it made my coursework so much better. Um, so, how do you inspire me? So, in where I come from, I come from Clapton on Sea. Um, it's quite a low income area, job availability is quite low. Um, aspirations before I chose to choose design engineer construct were probably retail, care work, or I'd have to travel, say, into uh, local town for Colchester, further out, maybe into London. Um, so, design engineer construct was a way for me to. Um, branch into an industry I had no awareness of from any of my other um, subjects at the time um, and at the start really I just thought it was architects and bricklayers um, so it was good to get awareness of the, the different roles I could um, sort of dip into and it was endless I, I, you know we had to do a, um, a presentation on all the roles in the industry and I, I, I couldn't get enough slides to be honest um, so with the exposure in the work experience with um, the help of doing my coursework and stuff, I was able to enter competitions within my court and within those on engine construct. Uh, Matt mentioned two of them, but there was another two that I participated in. This was a house for all, um, and very extravagant, I know. Um, now I realise working in the industry, the cost implications of this is quite large. Um, well, we didn't, we, we didn't, at the time we really didn't, we didn't really care. Um, we thought, you know what, it's supposed to be a house for all, it's supposed to be sustainable, we'll ignore the costs. 
Um, so we came up with a solar tree, uh, seed and roofing, we even had a light well, we had a, uh, a car and a turning circle, we, we had it all. Um, we was lucky enough to win this competition. Um, <laughs> um, so we, we thought it would be inclusive, sustainable in, in, in different ways and just try to branch out and think of things, you know, that is not in the norm of what you think of a normal project. I know some of it cost me patient again, probably quite large, but um, there we are. Um, the deck course itself um, helped me out massively, personally. Um, I, at the start, my grades were in my aspirations quite low. I've worked with deck. It's a coursework-based subject with an exam at the end, um, so it enabled me to get um, a good grade and to be able to really dive into the coursework and then um, hope for the exam for the best, really. Um, the, me the biggest part of deck, you know, you can give this course, but it's really the teacher itself. So yeah, anyone from a, a, a my teacher was from a DNT background, and he sort of took the deck and he's gone to Malaysia now and to teach deck out in there. But he sort of took our class for the, you know, loads of lads and uh, and women that have um, wanted to sort of be architects and builders and sort of create career paths for us. He created connections with the industry. Um, we had a, uh, a company adopt our school. Um, there was about five of us that have now gone into employment in my year alone, um, and I don't think one of us got below an A, and there was 30 of us in the class. So, you know, the, the impact he had on us career-wise was huge. Um, so, through DEC, it's accepted in most unis in the area, so um, I used um, DEC was the biggest part of my application for uni. Um, I got into building and surveying at Anglia Ruskin University, and I'm the first person to get there in my family, um, which was, for me, huge. Um, but on top of that, through DEC, I've won two national competitions, uh, this one, and I got to um, design a restaurant for Jamie Oliver. I took the local, um, it was a, we call it Martello Tower, so it's an old World War II tower they used to look out and see if uh, Germans wanted to invade, and we converted that into a restaurant. Um, and we used um, ideas of sort of aquaponics, so we were going to have a fish tank, and the, the um, sort of the, the waste that they produced was going to be used as sort of fertiliser for any um, sort of herbs and stuff that we were growing to, for the restaurant, so that was pretty cool. Um, so this is the Jamie Oliver competition. So we used, again, make sure we're using Revit to sort of visualise our ideas and use that aquaponics there. Um, and to finish that off, I was lucky enough to get invited to um, the RCS to um, attend their 150th anniversary, I believe it was, and meet the uh, Royal Majesty, so that sort of summed it up really, I sort of peaked there, but yeah, that's my, <laughs> sort of journey. That's my journey, and uh, yeah, for, for a low income sort of area with an academy, it was, it was huge, it sort of exposed me to the industry, which I didn't really know was there and was available for me in, you know, a seaside town, um, and I'm, I'm not the only one, there's, you know, there's probably hundreds of kids out there that have gone through the same career path as me and my, my classmate and colleague Sam can attend today, but I'm sure we'll be badging on it about it as well. But yeah, that's my interpretation. Uh, thank you. Good questions. Thank you.